from just being an average Christian to being a Christian whose heart is on fire for God. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Winnie Duck back again with another video. Yay! If you're new here, my name is Winifred and I film about faith, medicine and lifestyle. If you're an OG, you already know you have my heart. Thank you for returning. Thank you for always watching my video. I love you guys. If you're new here, please do well to subscribe to my channel, like this video, like this video, just support the ministry and leave a comment new subby new subby in the comment section down below so that i can holla at you and without further ado i will be getting right into the video in today's video i'll be sharing five key ways to up your spiritual life in this new year everybody has new year resolutions and part of it i'm assuming if you're watching this video is spiritual growth so these are the five key things that helps me up my spiritual life in 2022 and in the years to come but in 2022 i attained such great spiritual height i was so um pleased with myself i was so proud of myself and i'll be sharing these tips with you guys just stay tuned relax and enjoy so the first one is being intentional with my word life now what helped me is the bible app i know like i prefer hard copy me too i know if you're saying uh, i prefer hard copy but i knew that um with this um bible app you version oh my god that has been a lifesaver because it has a lot of bible plans and these bible plans make it very interesting to read the bible because then you now have like okay the book of job finishing the book of job in seven days or 14 days it depends on how it is divided um there's one that i'm currently on where it's um reading the bible in 90 days i'm quite excited oh my god we go through series of books of the bible in one day and it's just interesting you'll be shocked and thankfully the U version app actually has the audio part of the bible so i just always listen to it on the go say i'm washing plates i'm having my shower dressing up to go out like it's like a passive way of accomplishing that so i integrate that into my daily activity where i know that like i get notifications on my phone read your bible today so i'm just like oh it's true i've not played my bible app so those things like those little little things here and there helped me you know stay in touch with the word it helped me build my word life so um i'm not just living life on the go do you get me that's one another point. thing was the kind of music i listened to this is a bit controversial and um a lot of people might not quite settle in this me too me too it's okay it makes the two of us <laughs> but the truth is what you feed your mind with what you feed your spirit with is what it gives you music is a spirit i don't know if you've heard this before but this is true listen music is a spirit and it depends on what spirit you're exposing your heart to <laughs> that was going to enter into your heart and then when you want to hear from god say you want to hear what god is saying and somehow you've put a bias into the heart so i think one of the major goals for me last year was i wanted to hear god expressly i wanted to hear god more like when god speaks i want to i want to create a medium of communication when when god speaks i know that this is god speaking and not just my mind or not just um what's based off of my emotions this is what god is saying for me at this time so i wanted to sharpen my senses to hear god more so those one of the things i did was to um imbibe the spirit of listening to gospel music only now, did I achieve that last year? Almost. I'd say I did 90%. And I am, which is why I'm really glad and happy about my project. Because this, uh, my progress right now, because this particular point was a struggle in the social media age. Um, it is hard to go through um, the social media without listening to one or the other music that is not really um, edifying, so to speak. And some of them are so intoxicating 
some of them are just like like you're just catching crews but you don't even know what you're saying like yeah so my i can't even open my mouth to utter but you'd be like okay hey god as christians are we actually opening our mouth to say this thing but it's like i beg don't take life too serious i beg it's just a joke it's just for crews i'm a cruise and cruise to your fire god i beg you so i'm like ah. Please cut me out too. But sometimes it gets so enticing. Before you know it, you two, you are nodding your head. And then next thing, the thing is living rent free in your head. You're in the bathroom instead of you to be worshipping or using that time to study the word or pray. You're not thinking of that song and the song is just dancing in your head. You don't even know when you're moving your body to the song. And you're like, hey, God. I don't go. Anyways, <laughs> but I just thought like that was one, that, that was a major push for me, honestly. It was a because I had to intentionally filter the kind of music I listen to, the kind of films I watch, the kind of things I just feed my mind with because I wanted my mind to be reflecting who I wanted, I want to be, who I'm looking to be in the future. So I was feeding my mind with things that I want to see in my life, not things that I don't want to see in my life. <laughs> if you get what I mean. Next point is prayer. I had to put in place systems that will help me remember to pray now this in, in if you're someone who is in the working class or if you're a student there's there's every excuse for you to say ah i'm tired oh i woke up yesterday uh, i just wake up in the morning next thing you enter the bathroom and you're out listen Prayer is communication with God. And however you do that, communication is between you and God. Just make sure you put intentional markers of prayers, like think the way you want to pray, how you want to have. What I'm working on this year is having a quiet time. I've never really had a quiet time routine. I just always have them periodically. But I want to be more consistent with that. But the book of Matthew, I've forgotten um, which chapter exactly. I'm talking about how Jesus was teaching his disciples to pray and say, um, teach us how to pray. I mean, the disciples were already praying before then, right? But how come, like, they were not saying, teach us how to pray? And Jesus was already there with them and was like, how do you pray? That means there's a wrong way to pray, right? And Jesus taught them the order of prayer. So I felt like I needed to know exactly how I'm praying applying the word in prayer for effective prayer that, that you can pray wrong prayers you can pray and miss so we don't want to be exacting prayer is work let me just point that out prayer is work so you don't want to be exacting that kind of energy into prayer and you're not getting results so, <laughs> the bible says hope defies makes the heart weary we don't want anything making yeah. us you know I, like I said, I was reading the word steady, so I fed myself with the word so that when I pray, I'm able to pray in line with the word. Now, structures I put in place for prayer were not so solid. I will want to do that better this year, but I had prayer points that I specifically told myself every single day, you must pray for this person, more like intercessory prayer. So I had that in, as a body in my heart plus my own personal intentions, and I will put them on sticker notes like these ones on my wall on my wardrobe my mirror so that even when i'm dressing up i remember oh i need to pray for this person and then i just say a word of prayer before i go to bed sometimes i try to keep up with the midnight prayers and stuff so i just set alarm throughout the day if i go through my phone i'll show you like places where i set alarm wake up and pray winifred prays it's 9 30 prays it's time for praise just open your mouth or 12 minutes begin to speak in tongues for 10 minutes i just set all of those small small things nuggets here and they just remind us so that every single thing around me is oozing what i am trying to achieve and i'm not distracted Next thing i'll say it was fasting oh my god prayer and fasting goes hand in hand but listen the way I fasted in the year 2022, I have never fasted my life before. I started going to this church, Dominion City, um, when I came to London. And they are January. I joined them late 2021. So entering into January, I don't know. I did not know that this is what they used to do. <laughs> I don't know. What's what they do for you? Hey! Hey! <laughs> oh, well, it was a 30 days fast. I say, yeah. 30 days, you not know, say one week, you not know, say 12 days. We used to do 30 days fast. What do you mean 30 days fast? It shocked me. But I realized that that really, really transformed my life. Oh my God. Like, I actually did a 30 days fast. Guys. <laughs> From that day, 
Then the pastor encouraged us that through the year, you shouldn't just stop at the one a month fast. The devil that pursued you, that he went on a break, he will be right back. So if you think that, ah, in January, I've already fast the fast for the whole year. <laughs> a dreamer. Anyway, so I kind of imbibed the spirit of fasting and prayer. So throughout the year, I just made it and fasting for no reason yes it's like no but it's never for no reason they always get something where you want pray about and normally on a normal day you would also want to you know just thank god praise god at least just for existence just for koinonia just for intimacy sometimes just pray and fast just starving the flesh to feed the spirits so that in the day of adversity <laughs> the scripture says, um, if your strength fails you in the day of adversity, adversity, it means your strength is small. So the way you build um, faith, you build your strength. You're building faith, you're building strength. So that in the day of adversity, for those times where you are too weary and too tired to pray, those prayers have been spoken into the future and they are helping lifting you up. Fasting definitely helped and I would advise there are different type of fasting. You don't have to go through with um, the dry fasting. You can do the 6 to 6. You can do the 6 to 3, 6 to 12. Total dry fasting, 24 hours fast, 48 hour fast, just drinking water. Some people do fruit fasting. There is called, there's another one called the Daniel fast. I've never tried that one. I'm looking forward to trying it though. And um, the different type of fasting, to, to be honest. As the spirit leads you, you can even do... For example, social media fasts, you know, dedicating this time to just focusing on reading the Bible um, and not going on social media because, you know, social media takes your time. It all depends on you. You tailor it to yourself and to your, um, what's it called, um, situation and how it best suits you. Mentorship. Um, mentorship really helped me this year or this past years. <laughs> Uh, I never th th that, that mentorship is one thing that God gave to me that I didn't know I need. It's like something when when you have something and then you didn't even know you needed that thing. Yes, that's that's how mentorship came for me, and I'm so grateful to God for mentorship because it has guided me, it has kept me on my toes, it has helped me to be um, a better Christian. And um, whenever I have questions, I have doubts, I know that there is an access point where I can always go for clarity, for guidance. There's a place where my spirituality is kept on fire constantly. Just when I'm thinking, oh, this thing, it's not worth it again. I get the word of encouragement. I get the push spiritually. And it's like, I know that there is a covering over me spiritually. And it's just so beautiful to have so i encourage you if you're not if you don't already have what um i call a spiritual parent spiritual father or spiritual mother a mentor to guide you in for your spiritual growth i think and i suggest highly that you do um get one even if it's just for the meantime over the screen someone that you look up to and you're always like watching the way they preach watching their word and however it comes for you really just let it apply to you personally for me it's personal it's different i don't have to say okay do it exactly how it was done it's not a one size fits all however i'd say mentorship is a great a great um key to spiritual growth it's just beautiful to see see people that have the burden for christ burden for souls and it inspires you. It keeps you going. It takes you away from just being an average Christian to being a Christian whose heart is on fire for God. So um, I'd encourage you, look into um, getting one if you don't. Someone who you look up to in the spiritual regards for guidance, for help. I'd also advise someone within your proximity, if possible, someone whose phone or like contact is really easily accessible for you so that in case you have questions, worries, doubts, or concerns, you can always reach out to them and they will be there for you. Because this journey of Christianity, bruh, ain't easy. Just saying. Um, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, if this video is helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And to the next time you see me stay fabulous, don't forget to subscribe once again. Thank you.